started them. What I was, first off, I appreciate everybody that's made the effort to be here. I know there's, I always say, I know there's many, many other things to do. Um, I believe it's advantageous for us all to meet and uh, if nothing else, as a family and have some fellowship, which I think is important, but also to talk about these things in God's Word. So, lately I've been studying uh, Islam. What is, what is it? And I'll tell you why I'm studying it. You may, as, as we go through this thing, you may wonder, you may ask yourself, well, does, does David think I'm about to go join him or something? Why is he studying all this? And I don't think you're about to go join them, but I do know this. There's young people involved in our families here, and the, the subtlety in which Islam operates, and it's all through Satan, of course, but the subtlety in which they operate can, can draw young people in. And where, what I've learned where they're really smooth is drawing minorities in, people who feel like they don't belong in a society or they're underprivileged in a society or, or are discriminated against. Islam is real good at gaining those as they come into an area. So, so um, <clears throat> for, any of, for, for any of our people or our kids as they grow up to go off and to be fooled into being involved with Islam or marrying into it or befriending people that are into it, there'd be some hard, hard troubles for them ahead, especially for women involved. And uh, you hate to see somebody within your, your own family fall into that kind of thing. So that's why I'm looking at it. I want to know what it is. In Isaiah chapter uh, 33, we, we read, I read a verse, uh, I like a verse there that says, in wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. And, and so I want to know what it is. So, it's coming fast around the world. Islam is, is, and these are all statistics you can just get off the internet and, and you say, well, why do you believe the internet? Well, for some basic statistical and historical data, you can get close enough to, to understand what's going on. So supposedly there's about 1.6 billion people in the world who are so-called Muslim. And Muslim is the way a person who speaks Arabic or, or the way most people, it's, they pronounce it Muslim. It's M-U-S-L-I-M, so Muslim. And so that's, that's the way it's said. So there's about 1.6 billion Muslim or Muslims in the world today. They're growing fast. Uh, they, are, they are the most adaptive uh, chameleon-like religion. They can adapt to anything, anywhere, and please anybody more so than anything you can imagine. So if you say, well, I believe this about God and Jesus Christ, they can adapt right around that, and they have writings already to make that okay, to, to make that acceptable. And so, so I want to study it so that I, I don't want to be afraid of it. I want to be able to face it head on if I ever have to. I hope I don't. But I want to know what it is I'm dealing with because there's going to be a lot more and more of it in the U.S. in the years to come, and I think in not too many years, far away. So before, so as, before I get into that, I'm going to look at a thing in Daniel chapter 7 real quick. And I won't, I'd like for you to think of this, just a very basic thought here. Da Daniel chapter 7, we were talking about this at Kenny Wallace's house last night, or night before. And in Daniel chapter 7, um, Daniel goes through uh, his in Daniel chapter 2 as well which I'm not going to read it Daniel tells us about these kingdoms that are going to come on the earth uh, from the time that he was standing there when he wrote it and there's four of them three of them exactly like he said have come and gone if you never had a Bible you could ju and you just all you did was study your world history you would find that the Medes and the Persians rose to power exactly like the Bible said. Then you'd find that, um, uh, well, first it was the Babylonian Empire, then the Medes and the Persians, then Alexander the Great took over, and I remember studying him in public high school. And and so if you, if you read history first, then you went to the Bible, you would see that Daniel was exactly right. And he said all those kingdoms were going to rise and fall hundreds of years before they did, before the last one did. But here's the point I'd like for you to make. Daniel also said, in the future, he said, no, there's four of them, and three of them have per happened perfectly to Daniel's word, the word of God. But he said, in the future, there's going to be a fourth one. So there, why would anybody doubt the fourth one is not going to be exactly like Daniel said if the first three happened, when he said, how he said, and by name, who they were, right? So in Daniel 7, the fourth one, in verse 7, he says, 
And after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. That beast that Daniel's talking about there is, is Islam rising up in the world. And if Daniel was perfect right about the other three, I'm telling you, I have 100% faith that he's right about the fourth one. And, he, and then as we study prophecy, we know when the fourth beast comes about. Jump over in verse 19 there, still in Daniel 7. And says, then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, that's the one we just read about, which was diverse from all others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, stamped the residue with his feet. <clears throat> and the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whose three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. So from other parts of the Bible, not from the internet, not from history, but from other parts of the Bible, we know that horn that stands up there and that speaks great things is the Antichrist. And so, you know, that goes on down there and, um, and, and talks about that, that horn. Verse 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Daniel told us about three that happened by name, by date, by event, exactly. This fourth one's going to happen too which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour, what? The whole earth, the United States of America, y'all is involved in that. And this is an Islamic kingdom with the Antichrist at their head. But understand before the Antichrist can come and gain any power, Islam has to get strong over all the earth. And they're, they're, they're getting really strong. Um, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces and so on. And so anyway, that is the that's uh that's that's what that's about. So I've got a uh, so about Islam. I've been trying to learn a little bit about what it is, and so let me just go through and say a few things about it that I've noted and written down or typed out. And I got some of my notes here, and uh, and so on. Well, first off, it's a religion. Um, at the end of this study, I doubt we'll get there tonight, but in the next week or two, I'm I'm going to answer this. I'm going to answer this question for you. And for me, it I. The answer is 100% surety, just like black and white. But the question that I'm going to answer for you when we get to the end is this, because this is, these will be the things these young people will be faced with, is you have a book, a person says, you have a book and a belief and a religion and, and Jesus and all this stuff, fair enough, and I have me one. Why is yours, why do you, one, they're, they're learning to say, they're so adaptive, they're learning to say in the United States and in Europe, why do you judge me for mine? Why, don't, why do you not accept me? I, I accept yours. So I'm going to tell you, and, and, the, and their question is, how do you know yours is better? You're telling me mine won't work. I'm not saved with mine. How do you know that? I was brought up in this. I was born and raised in this. I believe it with all my heart, and you do the same. How do you know yours is the only way? I'm going to answer that question as we get to the end of this uh, this uh, this study thing. All right. So here's a few things about Islam. These are just facts. Nobody, no, no, no Muslim disputes these facts. It was started. It was started in around. Well, the man that started his name's Muhammad. This man right here, he was a flesh and blood man just like you and me. He was he was born in 570 A.D. And for, for those of you who don't know, real briefly, I don't want to bore anybody with, with elementary stuff, but if God started time with Adam, I'll tell you now for a minute, Islam in the U.S. and Europe call Allah God. He's not God. But if you talk to any Muslim today and they want to start being your friend and do all this stuff, they're going to say, well, God this and God that. Allah is what they're referring to. So whether they say God, Allah, what? The Creator... We know Adam was born. You go all the way down through time. Abraham, Moses, the children going to the promised land, Daniel. You know, we study how Israel went into captivity. You know what I'm saying? And so you come all the way over here to the New Testament all of a sudden. And roughly 4,000 years, very rough, from Adam to, it was 4,000 years from when Adam was born to when uh, uh, Jesus was born. Our calendar is based on the birth of Jesus Christ. The day of our Lord is what A.D. It's Anna Domini, and I don't, that's, that's the Latin. It's, it's the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So we're how far from this zero are we today? We're um you see it's very basic. We happen to be 2018 years later. So everybody just know what our calendar is about. All right, very briefly. Jesus Christ was 33 years old when he was crucified, so that's year what? 0033. We had to write it down. In year 0068, God stopped dealing with Israel. Y'all studied that with us a bunch. He cut Israel off. And today we're in a time period right here. What do we call this period? Grace. You call it grace, whatever. God interrupted dealing with Israel. All right. So in the year 570, which is way less than halfway across here, so in the year 570 years from Christ, this guy Muhammad was born. So he was born. So, okay, so what? So it was millions of other people. So he was born and he lived, he lived to, I think it's 632. I told he was when he died. So he was, <laughs> what, six, 62? 62 years old when he died. So there's a guy born. And it's, if you put Islam in a box, it's just as simple as this. A man was born, like millions of others, and he decided to get this thing going. You say, well, that's weird. Well, right over here in the 1800s, a man named Joseph Smith did the same thing. He decided to get something going. So did the Jehovah's Witness. There's a guy that founded that. He decided to get something going. And so... And people, Muslim people will agree with that, that that when it started? Oh, yeah. Well, they'll agree that their main guy was born in this year, of course. But they say that Jesus came and he was a man and all this stuff. So, like, how does that... They say that sense. Jesus Christ they was a prophet. prophet. They just say he right. was a prophet. No, we'll get, he wasn't yeah. the son of God. Right. We'll get there. So, uh -huh. good, good thing. I mean, Keep, like, it's kind of talk. Let's talk about it. Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no. Here's no. understand. Well, no, I mean, like a real common sense thing. Like, okay, if you're saying this started here, but we agree that this man came and he was just a prophet, like it, it just doesn't make. Like, okay, well, well, what happened before then? So like, let's, yeah, we'll get into it. And I have a few details to go okay. through. Good, <laughs> do, do think out loud because here's the point. If Zoe is 18 years yeah. old one day and wants to date a guy. And if you knew the horror for women, you would do everything you could to prevent it. Mm -hmm. All right, so you say, well, Zoe, you draw a little line up here and go, that's nuts. Whoa, she's get, if you could understand the deceit, she'd be getting fed right. in the other ear. You need to be ready. It's right. a, it's, when I say, I hope I'm using the right term, they're chameleon-like. You can't imagine the, the, the stuff. Okay, so, so Muhammad was born in 570. He died in 630. So what if our counter is off of you? Yes, Muslims agree with that 100%, Joe. Sure. Okay. No doubt about it. Okay. So uh, right now today, 49 countries around the world are are complete Mus are Muslim. Now, there can be a scattering of other stuff in the country. Understand what Islam religion is. It is 100% government, police, income, taxes, business, how you live. It's not... In America, in the U.S., we kind of have this thing of separation of church and state. It has zero to do with that. It's acknowledged, Muslims acknowledge, it's everything in your life. It's the police force. It's the government. It's you, how you pay tax. It's where you make your money. It's, it's in a lot of Muslim countries, women can't drive cars. So it has nothing to do with just we go to church, the mosque on whatever day, and then we get about business Monday. It's no, it's, it's, it's everything. Mm -hmm. Food. Food, and I didn't get, I'll get the name of it for you next week. Even in the U.S. now, there's, a, there's an Islamic label in the packet back of food. They can't buy it and they don't eat it. A good old Muslim right down here in Foley, if it doesn't have this label on it. And it's called, it's an Arabic word, but it's, it's an approved by Islam to eat that food. And way back, it had to do with the diet of the food. But now it's all business and money. And they're making millions off Americans. We don't even know it. We're eating it, buying it, whatever. And I'll show you that next week. So it's everything in a person's life. Islam is. So, so just understand that. Okay. 49 countries. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Let's, I'm just going to run through it. All right. What the word uh, Islam means, submission or surrender. In the U.S., and I'll show you some of the data next week, People are saying, they, they're saying, it means peace. And it don't. Their own published data, the Quran, which I have a, a copy of here, the Quran and their own published data says it means surrender. 
But did you know you could get on the internet today, and I did, and say, what does Islam mean? And all the first hits you're going to get are says, peace. We're a religion of peace. We're, a, we're a this and that. But that's not what Islam means. And, and we'll get on down the line. So it means submission or surrender to what? It's surrender to Allah and Muhammad's teachings. Period. That's what, that's what the definition of that word is right there. All right. So uh, uh, the religion is made up of a collection of teachings and practices that were common during this man's day. He was born in Arabia in a city called Mecca. And just like if he'd have been born in Fairhope, Alabama in 2018, there's all kind of common stuff and practices. So he picked up on all that stuff. The Quran, which is which is their, their holy book, is full of stories that were common back then, a bunch of false stories that Jews had going on that were not accurate for the Old Testament. The Quran's going to have a ton in it about, it's got a lot about Adam, a whole bunch about Abraham. It says things about all the main Bible characters and a lot of, not all of them, and a lot of the Bible events. It has things in it about Abraham being delivered from some fire that, he, that, that was going to kill him. Cain was told by a bird how to bury Abel. So you start to see the man made, but if I'm going to write a book today, I've got to get the stuff that the world believes in it, right? I've got to get those things, and even if I adjust them to make me seem somebody, Solomon talked to horses. Jesus, in the Quran, supposedly talked when he was a little baby. Uh, you know, spoke logic to his parents and all these things. So it's uh, it's kind of odd. All right. So Muhammad's the founder. He died. He this is when he lived. He says that Allah, they call God. I'll show you some information on that in a minute. Muhammad wrote. I, I don't know why. Good today. That's supposed to say the Quran. Muhammad wrote the Quran. which is their holy book. Depends about it. So Muhammad wrote the Quran, and Muhammad says throughout the Quran, Allah told him what to write. Just like the prophets in the Bible, God told him, so he's got to get his thing. Okay. Then the Quran, from the Quran comes something called the Hadith, and Hadith is a collection of books that are written by, that are, that, that are this. They're the stories, the sayings, and the actions of Muhammad himself. Some of the hadith was written by people who walked and talked and lived with Muhammad. They said he did this, and he said that. And a, you know, a man asked him what's right, and Muhammad said it, so now it becomes part of the hadith. But the hadith is a collection of writings that they have, and there's thousands of verses in them that are, all of, that are Muhammad in his life, what he did, what he said, and and so that becomes part of the scripture. And to end the Quran? No. Oh, it's two separate books. It, it's this. This is a whole bunch of writings. This hateth is, hateth his is right here. All right. Let, let me, and I'll just give you some some thoughts on that. Okay. And I, I can't near about pronounce all these. But one section of, or one collection from the hateth is is called the Jami at Tirmidhi, and it has three thousand nine hundred fifty six things that Muhammad said or events that he did and the outcome of them. But there's hundreds of them. There's a man named um, Abu Umama, and he was a companion of Muhammad. And Muhammad, he lived later than him. He died later. So he wrote part of this stuff. Uh, and, it, and it goes all, all the way down. The point is this. There is, you, these don't always agree. Uh, the Quran and all this stuff that was written and the stuff that Muhammad said and did. So it's every possible scenario you can question them on. Somebody that knows their religion can turn and, and agree with you if they need to or want to or disagree with you and say you're wrong. It's a jumble. It's, it's complete jumbled up stuff. It's not even close to one book like we have like this where you can go to it in faith. But, but but as you try to go and answer questions and things like that, you'll 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 figure those things out and, and maybe it'll come come to light. So and I got information on some of that. All right, Muhammad died, and after him for some hundred or two hundred years there was there was these things and I may not pronounce any of these terms right, but the caliph or the caliphate or caliphate, 
that was guys like Muhammad that just took over from him. Like Joseph Smith died in the Mormon religion. There was some successors. All right, evidently those caliphates played out, but they had a big battle. Y'all heard of the Sunni Islam and the Shiites. Mm -hmm. So there's two kind of main big factions of them out in the world today. A lot of us, they all go to this, this is the holy book. They don't all, they're back and forth in and out of all these volumes of books written called the Hadith. But the fact are there's two main factions of them. And these guys that took over from him got to feuding and fighting who's right. I want to be the big dog and all that. So they split. That kind of don't matter to us today. And for our purpose, it don't matter to us. All right. Um, let's see. There's imams today. And imams are usually associated with a specific mosque, kind of like we would say a priest in a church or a pastor or whatever. Um, all right. And so and this is all stuff that, you can just, you can just, a Muslim agrees to these things. Um, in Imam, the souls of the Imams possess sanctity due to their proximity or closeness to Allah. So the longer he has been at it, the older he's been, the more he knows the Quran and all. His soul is closer to Allah and he has more governing over your soul. Each Imam is the, it's called the Wali, and I may not pronounce this right, or the friend of Allah due to the spiritual sanctity of his soul. A good imam that's into it right and old and gray-headed and all that, he has the status of a prophet. Okay, so the caliphate thing where the, like Muhammad was the top. After him, there was a top guy that did all kind of conquering of different nations and all. Well, the, another guy wanted to be top and they split up. An imam, in a sense, he's not ever going to make this status, right? But he's a, he, he, he can be pretty tough. Um, all right, and also the, the walaya of the imams, which is their rule, is the authority they possess over the believers. So an imam has walaya over the believers, which is authority. And the, the Quran tells about that in one of the verses, verse uh, 33, 6. I'll give you some more information on that. And it says, the prophet has greater claim on the believers than even themselves, and his wives are their mothers. I don't know what that is. I don't know why it says that. But it's but in verse 33, 6, the prophet, which is Muhammad, has greater claim on the believers than even themselves. Okay? And, it, and then it finishes, the verse finishes, it said, and his wives are their mothers. So that's, a, that's an odd one. Um, I told you where Muhammad was born. Muhammad was born in an Arabian city called Mecca. He moved to Medina where he got real strong and powerful and he came back and he started conquering conquering with, with stuff with with with, with um, great authority and trouble and so all right so a Quran is this a Quran has 114 uh, I guess you'd call them chapters um, and then there's a bunch of verses in each chapter okay so some of the names of the chapters are these in English number one is the opening to the cow the family of Amran the women, the table, the livestock, Al-Araf, the spoils, the repentance, Eunice, who, Joseph, the thunder, Abraham, the rock, the bees, the night journey, the cave, Taha, the prophets, the pilgrimage. So these are the names of the chapters, and I won't read all 114 of them. But one of them is called the elephant. Uh, one of them is called the, the bees. Um, uh, just That's just some of the names. One of them is called the infidels, uh, the forbid the... For Enun, the expanding, the fig, the clock, the quakes. So, so, so that's what a Quran is. It's got 114 chapters with various verses in it. Um, it was originally written in Arabic, and I'll, part of their the the way they deceive today is you almost can't find an English translated Quran, and I've been able to compare some that's properly translated to English, meaning. It's originally written in Arabic, and to find one honestly translated in English is difficult. So why would I believe this one's honestly translated and it's not trying to fool me? Well, the, the man that translated this particular one, I, I'm gonna, I can believe his motive, okay? That's all it is, his motive. He was, he's born in Egypt, he's, a, he's Arabic, uh, grew up in all this, and started learning about it and got out and was a saved man, a Christian man. I've heard his testimony, I've met him face to face. 
and I, I know him a little bit, uh, and uh, he's uh, he wrote this Quran in English, translated from Arabic. If you go buy one today in the local bookshelves or whatever in English, it has all kind of peaceful stuff in it, and, and it hides a lot of their true motive. So um, this is the one that a true imam would use in his studies and service, but he would not on television talk about his peaceful religion out of this one. He can't afford to. And so, so be aware if you go decide to buy one translated in English and you want to know kind of what's going on here, chances are you are not reading the real Quran. And that's hard, that's hard, right? That's a that's a tough thing. I'll show you later on. Their religion allows them and promotes lying mm -hmm. to gain you as a follower. It, 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 and, and it just that's just the facts of it. Okay. Also justifies persecution right. if you don't become followers. That's right. that's right. All right, Mohammed so Michelle, you were saying a while ago, well, so he just came about here, just like in the millions of other people that have been born. Muhammad said, <laughs> it's pretty convenient, right? Of course, now he says, Allah oh, I told him all this. You get that. Yeah. But he said that he is the seal of the prophets. He's final. Seal, I'm the last guy. I... Oh. So he would say Joseph Smith that came after him is a fake and we ought to kill him. Okay. So Muhammad said that whatever he wrote about Abraham, Allah told him, if anybody wrote it before you, Muhammad, they may be wrong. Because you're the final guy to write about Abraham. So see, if you believe that, then it makes then then this is this is what it is. You know, the Quran's what it is. So Muhammad says, Allah told me I'm the last guy, and what I want you to write. Is the end of it. Just go by that. And so, all right. So, uh, just just hitting a few few thoughts as I go, real quick. Um, uh, let's see. In in the Quran, Jesus is referred to as, and I don't know how to pronounce it, I S A, and it's Issa or S A. That's what they refer to Jesus. There's a lot of conflicting info in the Quran about Jesus, and I do intend to read all these verses. Okay. So just I'm just hitting an overview, and I tend to read verses says that Jesus, by all means, was not crucified. It says that the Quran teaches that Allah put a fake in Jesus' place to deceive the people. And so Jesus was not crucified, and he did not raise from the dead. That sounds corny, and I, I get it. I get it, but bear in mind, you believe Jesus is your Savior. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a Muslim, I'm standing here saying, so you and your book are better than mine. Mm -hmm. Prove it. So you, you see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll get there. Give me, give me some time. All right. They believe they're the descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's oldest son. And they'll jump to some other places in the Bible that say, no, the oldest son got the blessing from the father and so on. So Ishmael was 14 years older than Isaac. So they say they're descendants of Ishmael. All the promises to Abraham were on Ishmael, not Isaac. So therefore, Jesus Christ came from Isaac's bloodline, right? All the way down to the line. So they, so that's how they discount Jesus. He's just a nice guy, prophet. So they believe they're descendants of, of Ishmael. Uh, oh, I have a question. Then. Yeah. Okay. So like the AD thing, like they're saying, like that's after death. Uh, no, AD is AD stands for. There's it's a Latin term, and, it, and I can't pronounce it right. It's Anna Domini, and, and it's the year mean? of our Lord. Right. So our Lord is was born here. He died here. Right, but that's a universal term. Yes. <laughs> Because our calendar. I, I oh know. no 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 in air. Oh, okay, that's a good point. In Arabic or whatever, they may say that they may not call this 570 AD, but okay. but they agree in time. That's when he was born. Yeah, 570. We're gonna say AD. That to them that might mean. I, I don't. They don't count right, time for Jesus Christ. Right, but that's trying to wonder like. How do they count time? If they're saying 570, then like, then what day did it start? Like, it, it started in reality, and they agree in five, or he was born in 570, the way we count time. In other words, they believe that this man Jesus and the fake cross and all happened at this time. Mm -hmm. They believe that Daniel lived when he did. They believe that Adam was born when he did. So the terminology they use to count time, I don't know. But they believe that all these characters lived. Well, it's got to be the same, though. If they're saying 570, it's 570. Well, well my point is, is, is uh, they may say... They may say four thousand and something years from that Adam guy, 
but it's at the same point in time. Ah, uh, okay. And that started. That's when the religion started. When the guy was born, that he was he he tells them that Allah told him to start the religion. Right. Allah yeah. told him all about history before him. You know, before, yeah. before, uh, so they don't Muhammad. dispute like, like he was born in Mecca, and that's history in Mecca when Mecca was founded and grew up. So that's not a disputable thing, right? But for us to talk about it, it, he was 570 years after the birth of Christ. But in the point in time, yeah, they agree, they don't think that he was way back here walking with Abraham or nothing. They agree that Peter and Paul and all them prophets and all lived and died before Muhammad lived and died. Okay, you know, Allah, Peter, they believe, lived. You know, he's say God is God of yeah. everything. So you understand, Michelle, on our chart, you know, where, and this is just reminding you, where did Peter and Paul and everybody live and walk and talk and argue? Remember after the cross, they said, Jesus did this and we can't eat meat and you got to be baptized. That was all right here within 30 or 40 years after the cross. And they, they agreed that there was Peter and there was all these good saints and these good guys. Mm -hmm. And they agreed that their Mohammed lived after them. But they do not, Jesus Christ is not the Son of God, and he is not right. the heir. They, you know, um, they basically, they replace, the Satan replaced Jesus Christ with Muhammad, you know, in this religion. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me just go and get hitting you some overview points, and I do want to get into what this thing actually says. I don't want to just say it and not be able to back it up. All right. So, real quick, we talked about the descendants. All right, so they say that Allah is the creator. They believe that Allah is, is singular. He has no shared function, and I'll get to those verses. There's, in other words, there's no God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Allah is all. It's it. Um, now, what they've learned as they've been getting into Europe, and they're deep into France and so on, is they, they, now that every newscast, any Muslim you see in the U.S. and all, is going to just say the word God here. And so, with that thought, let me jump ahead and let me let me show you this real quick about. Um, let me find on my note what the Quran says about. So they they say God, you know, that's Allah. But so here, let me let me get to a couple of these real quick. All right, I've already printed these. Okay, in the Quran three, chapter three, verse fifty four. This is what Muhammad said. And they deceived, and Allah deceived, and Allah is the best deceiver. So Allah can't be God, right? We know what is the what does our Bible say, the Bible say about who's the deceiver of the whole world? That's Satan. So in the Quran, verse three, chapter three, verse fifty four, and they deceived, and Allah deceived, and Allah is the best deceiver. Uh, Quran one verses one to three. The praise be to Allah and Rob, which is the Lord, and Alamin, which is the worlds, and Rahman, merciful, the owner of the day of din, which is the day of judgment. But it says, the praise be to Allah, the Lord of the Alamin, the Lord of the worlds. Who is, I know who the Lord of the worlds is because I experience it every day when I go out in this world and they're against me as a Christian. Who's the Lord of the worlds today? Satan, who's going? He offered them to Jesus Christ. God's going to get them. Satan, Jesus is going to get it back. So, even their own book, Allah can't be the God that we know as God, can he? They'll still say he's God, especially in the West and in the U.S. All right, in Quran chapter five, verse seventy-two, infidels indeed are those who said, "Surely Allah is the Christ, son of Mary." Those are infidels. Infidels indeed who said, surely Allah is the third of three. So, so, so there is no God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit with Allah. So why am I talking about this now? Can Allah be God? The what we know is God. The God, here's how I know for a fact God is God. Daniel wrote about three kingdoms that happened exactly like they happened. Daniel wrote about this one that's getting stronger. I know I'm saved because his spirit bears witness with mine. So let me read these verses again. He says in chapter 5, verse 72, Infidels are indeed those who said, Surely Allah is the Christ, the son of Mary. So we're an infidel. So the kid that goes to high school, that's going to be going to high school with our kids, they're all fun, having a good time. Their parents at home say, 
that kid you're hanging out with is an infidel. And you, your daughter will not marry one of those sons unless they submit to Allah and there's a submission creed that they would have to say. That's, that's just the way it is. And um, so let me ask you this. Can, can Allah be God? So they're already deceiving in the West when they say Allah is God. They, their own book says Allah is the great deceiver and so on. So, so I jumped ahead to that point to, to, to tell you. And there's so much other stuff that I don't know that we'll get it all. We'll do the best we can. All right. Um, let, me, let me hit a few more points. Okay. The Quran was sent down from Allah to, I mean, Gabriel was sent from Allah to Muhammad to write the Quran. Now what do we know? Who's significant about Gabriel in the Bible? God sent him to tell Daniel what? All this great stuff from here all the way out to the end of our program here. So do you see the copycat? Do you see how uh, the Bible says Gabriel was a great angel that brought great information to the prophets. Well, uh, Muhammad decided he was going to use Gabriel as well. Um, did it do other writings? Let's see. Scholars at certain points, uh, certain levels of the religion are qualified to establish an interpretation. All right, and they have a prayer, and I don't, and I won't pronounce all this stuff right. They have a prayer called the Salat, Salat, S-A-L-A-T, and it has to be done five times a day, and it will be done. And if you ever hire one in your business, you will, by law of the U.S. federal government, give them time off to pray during their prayer times. You won't. You won't. You, today in America, you can't discriminate against a Muslim if he walks away from his desk and goes and prays at his prayer time. And so, so the their rights are going to get. Christian people do that? Nope. You, can't, you can't in the name of Jesus Christ. Or you can get fired. Oh. And guess oh, what? But they can. Yeah. They can. If you, if where you work today, if a Muslim works and they want to pray and they're in the middle of a haircut and your boss goes, "Where are you going?" That you, they can't do that. But here's here, as we get to the end of this in the next two or three weeks, think of this. You're going to see that Allah is nothing but Satan because of what? When can you pray to God? Anytime. When should you? Anytime. Every time. When do you need to? Can you at work? Can you? Of course you can. If I want to get your money or if I want something else from you and you're an attractive lady and so on, all I got to do is start putting rules and regulations on you. It's, it's as simple as that. They pray five times a day. The prayer is said in Arabic, even though I've, I've been learning most, most Muslims don't speak Arabic. Most of the ones in Europe and all, you know, a bunch of them immigrated to Europe, but most of them have been born there in the last hundred years. They don't speak Arabic, but they're saying stuff. Okay, even though, let's see, uh, it begins, the prayer always begins with Allah Akbar. And I've seen this on the news, but, but before a jihad attack or a, you call a, um, a suicide attack or whatever, usually they holler out, Allah Akbar. And that means uh, Allah is the greatest. So Allah Akbar is what their prayer starts with, and it means Allah is the greatest. So they have to face Mecca when they pray five times a day. And in Mecca, there's a black cube square building. You can get a picture of it right off the internet. It's no big deal. It's a pretty big building, but it's black and it's a cube. It looks like a giant black dice sitting out there. And they have to face that building in Mecca. Okay? So, so that's their prayer. Um, uh, uh, let's see. It's often to the prayer. It usually refers to the mentor system. All right? All right. So in their prayer, they have to sit and bow and stand in certain positions. Before they pray, each of those five times, they have to do something called the ablution. And I'm not pronouncing this stuff right, I'm sure, which is a washing, a ceremonial washing. Where do you think they got that from? They had the Old Testament stuff, and they knew about the washing, okay? So you got to add some, some, some stuff. Um, it's a black cube. Okay, part of their, there's these things called the five pillars of Islam, which I'll get to before we finish. And, and in some, there's seven pillars. But on it, what determines whether or not they go to heaven or hell is how well they did on those five or seven pillars in their life. One of them is an annual trip to Mecca. It's called the pilgrimage. And so you go once a year, 
unless you can't go, there's a way out. But when you go, you march around that building, that cube, seven times. Okay? You walk around it seven times saying your prayer. you got to do that once a year if you can. And um, that is, where do you think they got that story from? You know, remember Jericho? They walked around seven years. Seven times. So, all right. Here's an interesting thing. Um, women must position themselves behind men during the prayer. A woman cannot be beside a man during their prayer. Have you seen them down on the prayer mats? You've probably seen that on mm -hmm. the news. Mm -hmm. So they pray on their knees in a prostate position, right, facing Mecca. Well, if there's three or four men, and that's all that's there praying, let's say you, you have an office and five Muslims work there. And so they got a room that they're allowed to go pray in. The won't, no woman can be beside any of the men. If there's five men, she will be behind the five men to pray. And they, you know, they get down on their hands and knees and they do their prayer facing them. If there's women, most of the time women are not even in there. <clears throat> um, but generally it's recommended that a woman stay home in prayer. Um, here's an interesting one about good old Allah right here. Now y'all tell me if y'all think Allah is God. But if you brought a, a well-experienced Muslim in here that's trying to grow Islam in the U.S., he's got verses that allow him to skate around this one. Or the Quran he's using is, hides this verse. But this is from the Quran. It says this. Okay, I've already, I've already, anybody wants to borrow this. All right, so in Quran 33, verse 43, Allah, it is who prays for you and his angels too to bring you forth out of the darkness into light, for he is merciful to the believers. Allah prays for people. What's wrong with that? Think about it for a minute. Who's all? His prayer? Who <laughs> does God pray to anything or anybody, or is He it? Yeah. Here's another one in Quran 33:56. Surely Allah and His angels pray on the prophet. Pray for. Pray on the prophet. O ye who have believed, pray on him and salute him, saluting. So who's Allah gonna pray for? Allah's not God, y'all. Don't be fooled when a Muslim says, and it's the, 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 the easy, real simple ones they're fooling Americans with are, we pray to the same God y'all do. Just have to go George Bush out. said that one time, and it yeah. was the most cheesiest thing in the world. But here's the point. He, he, well, I'll get, I'll get to some of those anyway. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you highlights is all I'm trying to do. All right, there's a thing that they have called the Shahada, and it's their Islamic creed, and, the, and it has several versions, but a short version is, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So in order to submit, you have to say that. And those people that got their heads cut off on TV a couple of years ago in the Rock War and all that, they had to say that. They have, if they believe that you are saying that without a true heart, they can go on and kill you. But if you say that with a true heart towards Allah, they, got, they can't kill you. So in order to submit, one must recite this creed, uh, and so on down the line. All right? So the five pillars of Islam is this, and in some cases, there's seven. And I haven't figured out who believes there's seven or five or what. So they got the shahada, the faith, how well you stick to the faith in your life, that creed. There is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his prophet. That's one. And it says, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is messenger. Two. The Salat, the prayer we talked about, that they do five times a day and so on. There's something called the Z-A-K-A-H, the Zaka, and that's the alms that you give. So one of the five pillars of Islam is that everything belongs to God and that wealth is held by human beings on God's behalf. And there's a certain portion of your money you give to the, to the Islamic program. They have something called the S-A-W-M, Psalm, and that's fasting. And every year in the month of Ramadan, all Muslims fast from first light until sundown. They got to do that. They have one of the five pillars of Islam is the Hajj, which is the pilgrimage. Once a year to Mecca, walk around the, the, the house of Allah seven times. They have Jihad, which is one of the pillars, and that's holy war. That's striving against unbelievers. If you ask a Muslim today in the U.S., it's legal for him to say, that's striving against people who don't believe in God. But no, it's striving against people who don't submit to Islam. And what do you do to submit to Islam? I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. 
So one of their pillars is you have to commit jihad. All right, and then and then there's a, uh, finally there's another one called the walaya, and that's the devotion to your local is imam. An imam, remember, is like the the local head of the mosque, um, and so so on. What's salvation for a Muslim? All Muslims go to hell when they die at first, except there's one way to bypass hell, and that's uh, do a, a suicide mission for all. Okay. Can the Muslims will admit that. I mean, it, well, let me just read it. So I'll read. Here's the point. <laughs> Here's the point. No. Yeah. But it depends on who you're talking to and why he's talking to you. Yeah. If he's about to kill you, of course he'll admit it. But if he's trying to marry your daughter, of course he won't. He'll invite you for a steak dinner and y'all talk all about it. He'll show you all kind of neat things that, that Muhammad said through this and this is, now this is that and so on. Of course he won't admit it. But think of this, Michelle. You and I, if we want to believe, you know, we've talked in this Bible study enough about religions and stuff and baptism and what should I eat something on Friday or not. What do, what do we do about that? How do we know? What do we do? Read the Bible. Okay. What if you want to know? What are you going to do? Go to their holy book. Because I can tell you anything about Christianity if I have a mind to. If I want some of your money, what could I do? I could have Bible class after Bible class saying y'all need to be given ten percent. I could do it, and I could use the Bible to show it. So go to the Bible. Go to the Quran if you want to know about a religion. If you want to understand totally what Mormon is, Mormonism is, read the Book of Mormon. Don't ask some Mormon friend of yours. You may not get the truth. Right. Go to go yeah. to the book. Okay. Real quick. So Quran. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Once uh, you start going to the books, you'll realize how confusing it really is because none of them will say the same thing. <laughs> All right, so in Quran 11, chapter 11, verse 14. Uh, so whoever is removed from the fire and enters the garden, so indeed he becometh triumphant. So whoever's removed from the fire when you die and is put into the garden, you, you win, right? You become triumphant. In chapter 3, verse 185, and then Allah will show his mercy to some of them and he will admit them to one of his seven paradises. Uh, let's see. And do not consider those who were killed for the sake of Allah as dead, yet they are alive with their Lord, receiving their provision. And there's a couple others I'll get to later. So, so when an is when a Muslim dies, he goes into hell, and then based on how he lived his life per the five or seven pillars of Islam, he gets pulled out. So they, if you ever, I've talked to a Muslim. If you ever witness to him, they'll say, "No, it's God's mercy and all." But at what point, where's the scale balance? If I did 60% of the five pillars, do I stay in hell or does Allah pull me out? You see, see the point? And I'll tell you later how to, how to prove that that don't work. Okay, if we got just a minute more, I was gonna spend, a, spend the last of my time because for tonight, that is talking about um, my first cabinet. We talked about Allah a little bit. I wanted to talk about women real quick in, in Islam. All right. Okay. So the terms, the T I R M Z I on page 300, which is in the Hadith, which is in the Life Lessons and Teachings of Muhammad, says um, A woman cannot fast or pray during her period, for she is unclean during this time. And that is why Muhammad asked them to perform more prayer so Allah will remove them from hell. So there's your, there's your condition. So, so. All right. A woman's value is half of a man's in several places in the Quran. Quran 2, verse 282. So if the debtor was mentally deficient or weak or cannot dictate, so let his friend dictate with fairness and call two witnesses from your men. So if there were not two men, so one man and two women of those among you are pleased to witness. Did you catch that? So two men, men Ben, can witness a, an issue about your estate or your affairs or whatever. But you and me can't witness because you're not good enough. It takes two of you to equal one of me. Does that make sense? It says two men can witness, but if one of the guys is not available, it's going to take two women to fill his place. One woman's word is not as good as one man's word. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. 
Now that you'll have to catch this, but you but women are dirtier than dirt. Now you gotta catch this. Quran mm -hmm. four forty three. Some of this is weird, and I some of there's kids here, and I can't say some of what the Quran says. All right. Oh you who have believed, do not come near the prayer while you were drunk until you know what you were saying, neither after uh, sexual uh, stuff, except that you are merely passing by until you wash. He's talking to the men. And if you were sick or traveling or one of you has relieved himself or you have touched the woman, so you do not find water, then rub your face and your hands with good dirt. Surely Allah is pardoning and forgiving. If a man has touched a woman in a sexual way before prayer, he can wash with good dirt and go to the prayer. You're dirtier than good dirt. Does that make sense? No. You wash a woman. You wash a woman off of you with good dirt. dirt. Good dirt. Oh, dirt. Oh, good you dirt. see what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, no. Here's a Michelle. Here's a guy in it. Here's a guy writing stuff. Whatever's coming to his mind, and I'm, my my gut tells me he had some kind of good drugs back then. No, I'm gonna read that again. So if the debitor, oh, I'm sorry. O oh, you who have believed, that's a believing Muslim man. Do not come near the prayer. You can't come pray if you're drunk. It must make sense to me. Until you know what you're saying, until the alcohol leaves your body. Nor after sexual involvement with a woman, unless that you are merely passing by until you wash. So if you happen to have been with a woman and you're passing by the prayer, you need to wash first. Fair enough. And you who were sick or traveling, da 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 da, and one of you who has touched the woman, so that you don't find any water. It's not convenient for you. You're passing by the prayer and you can't find water to clean yourself up. Then do this. Here's your alternative. Rub your face and hands with good dirt. Surely Allah is pardoning. So then go on into the prayer. So, so. All right. Uh, all right. In Sahih. In, Basically, went to the crap. Let's move on real quick. In Sahih, which is book number four of the Hadith, uh, the item number is 1032. Um, Al-Bukhari says, uh, The Messenger of Allah said, I said, and he replied, Do they believe we are, we are hell bound no matter what we do? No, my dear friend, not all women will be in hell, but most of the women will be in hell. For, all right, so then another one of these things here, number 521, Muhammad said, and Kenzu al-Yumal confirms, that is talking about Muslim women, so as for you, the chance for you to get to heaven is low. Okay. I, I, mean, I, just, I won't read them all, but in the Quran chapter 4, verse 11, it says that in an inheritance situation, you have brothers and die. And it's all the kids. The woman gets half of what the men get. Okay, that's just, I'm talking about women. A man can lie to his wife. Muhammad said, it is lawful to lie in three cases. A man to his wife that she would be pleased with him, or at a time of war, because war is deception, or to make peace between people. So Muhammad, so Muhammad says a man can lie to his wife to keep peace with her. All right. Here's a, there's a couple of rough ones in here. Let's see. Uh, okay. Quran, verse 4, chapter 4, verse 33. And if you fear that you cannot deal fairly among the orphans, the orphans are the captives from the war, the, the young women, children, so have sex, which they would say marry, with what appeals to you from the women, from the war, two or three and four. So if you fear that you will not treat them equally, so one wife or have sex with what your right hand possesses, talking about the spoils of war, uh, that is near that you may not have hardship. So if we go to a war and I'm strong enough in the, in the religion and I'm not just a worker, peasant, fighter with a machine gun, and I get to say so what I get out of the battle, I can get me up to four sex slaves from the battle. It says, have sex with, with what your right hand possesses. Uh, chapter 425, And whomever among you cannot have sex with free believing women, 
So marry those whom your right hand possesses, your slaves, from your young believing girls. And Allah knows best your faith, some of you from others. So have sex with them with the permission of their masters and give them their wages with fairness. Chase without fornication and not entertainers of lovers. So if they become Muslim, so if they commit indecency, so torment them half the torment prescribed for your free married women. So if one of your slaves goes off fooling around on you, you got to torment her with half of what you would if it was your real wife. I'm telling you, it's weird stuff. I didn't make it up. If you read it, I'll let you borrow this. That's a goofy. Um, it's, it's a pretty goofy rule call it there. And do not compel your young females, that we're still talking about your slaves because we're in still chapter 4, to become prostitutes if they want to keep chase so that you seek the material of the world's life. And whoever compels them, so surely after they were compelled, Allah is forgiving and merciful. All right, I'll read you this one out of chapter. I didn't write this one down. I have 65 real quick. Let me read this one. Uh, you got to listen to these words carefully to get what it's saying. I'm in chapter 65, verse 4. And for those of your women who despair of the menstruation, if they've missed their period, if you doubt that they may be pregnant, their prescribed waiting time is three months. So if you're unsure, you're not supposed to go in until them for three months. As well as for those who have not yet begun menstruation, you got to wait three months if you doubt they've begun before you can have sex with them. That's pretty serious business, isn't it? Let's see. So you got to wait three months. As for the pregnant ones, their term is until they give birth. Uh, whoever feels Allah, he will make this affair the easiest. This is the command of Allah he sent down to you. And so, whoever, and so whoever fears Allah, he will atone for him his evils and will make his wage great. So if you feel a little bit guilty about marrying a child, it says atone, uh, Allah will atone for him his evils and will make his wage great. So, um, and this, this is not a, I mean, when you read it, but now I can take, you can go to, I can take you to a news clip right now on YouTube where there's a Council of Islamic Relations in the U.S., which is a big organization. And every time there's a terrorist attack, they get on TV, these nice guys with beards and these very attractive Muslim ladies with their things, and they say, we denounce that, we hate that terrorism, that is not us, that, that does not represent all Muslims. And they'll say, no, women have it easy in Islam. Women are just as equal as everything. But where do you go to find what the religion teaches? So either that woman is fooled, right, that says that, she I means she don't know what her own religion is, or she's thinking because she don't want to stay in hell, she wants Allah to get her out after she dies the quickest, she's thinking that she's supposed to help gain all these followers. One of the two. There's just no she's either don't get it and never read her own holy book, or she's committing what they are allowed to commit. They're allowed to lie. And I'm gonna, as we go into the next week or so, I'm gonna show you the verses that out of their book that says when you enter a nation and you're weak. It, it, um, these are my words, but I'm going to read it. Pretend to befriend the believers of the book. The believers of the book are Jews and Christians. The book is the Bible. So pretend to be to befriend them. And Allah will forgive you so long as your heart don't do it. In other okay, words, so if you're lying, you're cool. But then when you get strong, it says, even those really nice ones that are in the U.S. now that are not strong enough to take us over, it says when you get strong, it's your job to take them over. And taking them over, the, their, their Quran is very clear, is to take all their belongings, their money, give you and all a chance to submit by saying the creed. If we say it and they're not sure it's from our heart, if we say it and it's from our heart, the men go to work and pay taxes, the women become slaves. It's just that simple. Well, I mean, like, I have clients that go, that have been over there and they, like, would like try to speak, you know, like, like especially in the South, we speak to people, and like they would like speak to people, and like they would like look away, like so. I mean, they, a woman can't even speak to another man. They can't even drive in. in so I think it's Saudi Arabia, which is a big around. dark one. They can't, drive. You can't look at, you can't Where make you eye can't contact, you can't know. say hello. If you make eye contact, you've committed. You've yeah. Committed what I would like for y'all to, and her husband can beat her out to death. Literally. Oh, I'm going to show you that in the ground. Literally. He can. The the man can beat the wife to get her to make her submit. To his mm -hmm. wishes. Mm -hmm. My thing about why am I doing all this? 
I want to know about it so that I could be prepared. I may have to witness to one one day or something. But I'm more concerned about this. This this the subtlety and the slickness and the the, the way they get in and get a person. They get a girl to date the dog, the son, and it's. I mean, there ain't no. If you marry one, there's no getting back. And you can't go to like the local judge in Foley and say, "Oh no, I want to divorce." No, they have ways of dealing around all that. I mean, they can beat her so bad at home she's scared to tell. You and me, she's in trouble. And so my concern is I want to tell my group, my family, what it is. You don't have to believe every word I say, but go look for yourself. I'm no better than you. I just start looking. It's not, it's a, it's a troublesome thing. All we, we need to avoid it best we can. Um, uh, so, uh, oh yeah, it, it just goes on and on and on. Um, he says in, you know, in chapter 33, verse 26 and 7, and he brought down the people of the book, that's the Jews and Christians, who backed, who backed them from their strong places and cast the terror into their hearts. A group of them you are killing and a group of them you are taking captive. And he made you to inherit their land and their homes and their money and the land which you had never set foot on. And Allah was mighty over all these all things. It just it just goes on and on and on. So I, you know, if you want to find out the truth of these things, you're going to have to read the Quran and read what Muhammad wrote. You won't find it out if you research it in America in the U.S. right now. It's too late. It's gone. The truth's gone. And um, um, oh, it's yeah, it's boy, that's some. The messenger of Allah said, I have been commanded to fight against people till they testify that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and they establish prayer and pay zakar, that's the, the taxes, the tribute. And if they do it, their blood and property are guaranteed protection on my behalf, except when justified by law, and their affairs rest with Allah. So if you submit your blood and your properties, okay. It's a, it's not a, it's a, anyway, um, I'll cover more of these things. So tonight, here's what I attempted to do. I attempted to tell you who Allah is. I attempted to tell you just a handful of the things about women in Islam. So next week, I want to talk to you about, is there such a thing as peaceful Muslims? Because that's, that's all you're going to hear in the U.S. And we need to honestly check that out. Is there really peace? Can there be? We need to know. I'll tell you more about what they think it means to be saved. And then I've got a list of things I want you to, I, I want to warn you just to be on the lookout for as you as these things come about. And so I'll, I'll go a little bit further next week with some more highlights. And so so be careful.